but if you make it taste good, you know. Like. Peace be with you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we are continuing our le lecture on the philosophy of the Constitution. Now today we are going to talk about the fourth step that is that led us to the Constitution, and that is the development of a po parliamentary system. Now, um, in 1265, uh, it began to gradually develop in uh, England, and it was the, if you don't know what a parliament is, it is a system that is somewhat similar to our Congress, where it is a group of representatives that represent the people, uh, supposedly. And... Uh, this new uh, parliament, uh, the first one in a uh, couple hundred years in uh, England, um, came had a they 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 had three basic powers that were uh, taken back by the people. The first was the principle of no taxation without representation. And this was big because the, the kings of England, uh, as well as uh, other officials, would put heavy taxes on the people. And so the people finally said, all right, um, we, if, we're going, if you're going to collect taxes on us, we want to have representation based on, on your ability to collect taxes. And so uh, they, the, the people won the right. Uh, to uh, have uh, a parliament have the ability to uh, have a voice in the government and in addition to the taxation they also had the ability to uh, make uh, to, to confirm all laws put forth by the government and so a law had to go through Parliament first before it could go into effect from the, the king. And then finally, and uh, this was an important one, the uh, the, the king would choose officers and sometimes these officers were very corrupt and the people really hated them and so the parliament won the right to to uh, in basically impeach the king's officers if they could be accused of a, of a if, if they have violated the law in some way and this was a plus because now the the king's officers had to at least be good enough to appease the people that they were over. Eventually, over the the years, uh, Parliament evolved, and this is a this uh, primarily was stepped up between uh, two German kings that were over England, uh, George I and George II, uh, between 1714 and 1760. Uh, if you didn't know, the current British monarchy is actually a German monarchy. Um, and this uh, uh, started a couple hundred years ago. And uh, George the first and George the second were uh, all were uh, part of that German king line, and uh, during during their reign, uh, Parliament was left even more on its own, 
and uh, this was then uh, evolved into uh, um, uh, to, to have somebody called a, a prime minister and the prime minister was over the parliament and basically the king stepped back from being a, a major power figure and um, the, uh, the, the government started being run by the prime minister and uh, we call this a limited monarchy and, uh, and ha having this limited monarchy in the parliament is what il uh, allowed the, the people to gain even more uh, control over the government and basically the parliament exercised uh, all the power in the government by this time in uh, England. And um, in fact our, our, our Congress is an evolved version of the parliamentary system and uh, we will talk more about that later. But this was a very important step because this uh, what led to finally putting a reign on the king's power. And so the monarchy, a total monarchy, became a limited monarchy. And uh, eventually the, the king becomes a figurehead. And the real government power is held in the parliament and is run by a prime minister who is elected by the people. And um, ha having a, the system was a, a, a great step in recreating the original found, foundation that the Anglo-Saxon people uh, had. And I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.